Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. I just wanted to put together a quick video tutorial to show you the latest feature that we've added to the Design Files platform. So our new distort tool is now available. We're really excited to launch this because it's gonna make it really quick and easy for you to distort images within your 3D designs to create a more realistic look that you can then present to your clients. So I think the best way to show you exactly how this tool works is to just build a 3D room from scratch. And by doing that, you'll see all the various cases uh, where you can use this uh, particular feature. So let's just jump in and get to it. Now I'm going to start by grabbing an empty room image from our background library here. And you can use any of these templates if you want to for your designs. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you have pictures of your client space or if you've created any renderings of your client space, you can go into your own personal library and you can upload those images to your project items. Uh, once they're uploaded to your project items, you can drag those um, images of your client's space out onto your canvas and then use that as the backdrop. Uh, so now that I have mine in place, I am going to just start dragging in some products. Now, I have spent some time to put together a collection of products that I'm going to use within this design, and I added those to my project items. This is a really good idea to do. Um, it's going to help you, like for the most part, you're, you're going to be adding your products to your main library here, because you're going to be building up that database of products that you want to use across all of your client projects. But sometimes it can be a really good idea to also add products directly to the specific project because then you'll have a curated list that you can start dragging onto your design board. So it'll make it quick and easy for you to find specific items and, um, and just quickly drag those onto your design board and cut out the time that you're going to spend by looking for those within your main library. So anyway, it's just something to consider if you want it. Now I'm dragging out this rug and you know, for the most part, rugs are shot square on. So in the past that has been problematic to create a more realistic 3D design when you're using your rugs. But now the new distort tool over here is going to allow you to pull on the individual corners of that rug so that you can get it to lie flat on the ground. So we're just gonna pull that down corner by corner until we get this into place. And you can just kind of wiggle that around a little bit until you have it in the appropriate angle. So that looks about right. And I'm just gonna save that. And now we've got the rug lying flat on the, fl on the floor. So I'll start bringing in some extra products and we'll build out this room design. So I'm just gonna scale down this entertainment unit here so that it fits within the back wall here. Okay, and we've got a bit of a shadow on the bottom here. So I'm gonna clean this up by using our background removal tool. I'm just gonna pull this toggle to the right until all of that light colored shadow is gone. Save it and we'll just slide that into place. Okay. And let's see, let's add some paint color to the wall actually. So let's say I wanna create an accent wall on this one right here. So I'm just gonna go into the paint color library and I've already set aside my color. So I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm going to line up the f one of the points within the wall here. So I'm gonna line up my paint swatch with one of the uh, intersections in the wall. And I'm just gonna hide my panel here for a second. I'm gonna click on the distort tool and I'm just gonna pull that up to the top corner here. And I'm gonna bring that down just slightly. And I'm gonna pull this one as well and just start lining up the paint swatch with the edges of this wall. Okay. So there we go. So I've got my first, actually I'll just tweak that just slightly Bring this down just a smidge and this one down just a smidge. Okay, great. Now I still have to fill out this section right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to work on our distort tool so that you can add additional points and you won't have to bring out two paint swatches. But for now, this is our, our first run of this uh, distort tool and this will, for now, this will uh, basically work for you. So you're gonna bring out two paint swatches. Again, I'm gonna line up my paint swatch right here. I'm gonna hit the distort tool, and now I'm just gonna start dragging these points out. And over here. And we'll just drag this one out anywhere. It doesn't really matter where this one goes. So I'll apply that. 
and now we've got the whole wall filled out with a paint color. Now I'm just going to bring this cabinet ahead because it's sitting directly behind that paint swatch. So I'll just bring this forward. There we go. And bring my uh, product panel back here and I'm going to start adding some products. So let's bring out this sofa. Now I'll just clean the sofa up a little bit because a little bit of the, uh, there we go. It's just missing a little bit of the product image there. And I'm gonna scale this into place. And you can see that with this sofa, it's not shot on the best angle for this particular space. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna add it to the, this wall here. We're gonna make it sit along the side wall. So I'm gonna flip it first, line it up. I'll click on the distort tool and I'm just gonna start pulling on those corners until I get this thing exactly where I want it. Perfect, okay. There we go. I'm going to apply this, scale this down just a smidge. Actually, I'm just going to tweak that one little bit so I can, there we go. I just want to have it fitting um, perfectly angled along the edge of that windowsill there. Okay. So now that I have that, I'll apply it. And actually, I think I'm going to add two of these sofas because I want this to be more of a conversational space. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the sofa. I'll flip it. Slide that along the sidewall over here and bring it up a little bit so it's in line. And there we go. So we're good to go. We'll bring these in just a little bit here. Okay. Now I'm going to add some curtains to this window over here. So I'm going to use this image right here. Now you'll see, you'll notice immediately that my curtains are cut off. Um, normally this again would be a problem, but with the distort tool, I'll be able to stretch these curtains out to fit the full length of the wall. So you can start using images that are, you know, slightly cut off or not on the, not in the perfect angle. And you'll be able to tweak that using the distort tool. Now I don't want my curtains to completely close off this window here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the crop tool and I'm going to take one of the panels. Okay. So we'll do that. I'm going to scale this into place, slide it up here. I'll click on the distort tool, angle up this corner here, angle this one down a little bit. So it's on the same angle as the window. I'm going to stretch out the curtain here. Okay. Just pull this in. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now that I have it where I want it, let me just slightly adjust this. Okay. So now that I have this, I'm going to hit the apply. I'm going to slide this up so that my curtain's uh, sitting a little higher up from the actual uh, window trim. I'm going to now push this curtain back all the way to the back uh, layer using this option right here. I'm going to bring it forward one layer. So it sits on top of the empty room image, but it's now sitting behind the sofa. So now that I have this curtain in place, I'm going to duplicate it and I'm just going to scale it down, slide it into place for the opposite wall here. Uh, use the layering tools to push this all the way back behind the empty room image and bring it forward one. In this case, I'm just going to scale this one down a little bit more. And I'm going to distort it so I get the extra length. So again, I'll hit the distort tool, pull this down a little bit, pull it down a little bit and get it exactly where I want it. Okay. So now it looks like we've got a nice set of curtains, uh, that are, um, surrounding this particular window. And I'm just going to start bringing products in to build out this room design. Now you'll notice immediately that when I'm bringing out products onto my design board, um, if your product is shot on a white background, Design Files automatically removes the white background so that you can get right to building out your 3D room design. So we'll just slide this down here closer to the sofas. And uh, because it automatically pulls out the white background, uh, in this case, it works perfectly. But in some cases, let's say I want to bring this art piece on. In some cases, it can pull out a bit of that white image that is in a particular product. So if you run into this, uh, don't worry, you can easily fix it. All you want to do is select the product on your design board. You're going to click on the background removal tool. You're going to pull this toggle all the way to the left and save it. And it's going to bring that image back for you. Now, in this case, it's brought back a little bit of the white edge outside of the art piece. So I'm going to cut that off by using the crop tool. So I'll just pull this in a little bit to get rid of that extra white, 
save it, and now I've got a nice clean art piece to work with. So I'm gonna put this over here and add it to this wall. Scale it into place here. And again, we're gonna click on that distort tool and I'm just gonna start angling it so that it fits with the angle of the wall. Okay, perfect. Slide that into place. And that looks about right. Okay, now let's see here. From here, I can really just start, we'll just bring in a few extra products here. So bring in a little side table to sit next to the sofa, add in a lamp. Now here's some other things that you can do when you're building out your 3D room design, and it's not necessarily specific with the distort tool, but some things you might wanna know anyway. So let's say I wanna add this tray here to the coffee table, and I'm gonna start adding some decorative elements within this tray. So let's see here. All right, these flowers right here. So if I want this to look like it's sitting within the tray, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, click on the, well, actually let's clean up this image a little bit first. There we go. And then I'm gonna click on the crop tool and I'm gonna cut the bottom of this vase off, okay? Now that I've cut the bottom of the vase off, I'm just gonna line it up with the edge of the tray so that it looks like it's sitting directly within the tray. I'm gonna do the same thing with these balls here. So these decorative balls. Now I don't need all of them, so I'm just gonna use the crop tool and I'm going to crop out the ones that I don't need and also crop off the section of the product that I don't need. So I'm gonna save that, scale it into place, and then I'm gonna add it to the tray and just line it up with the edge of the tray. And again, now it looks like those are sitting directly within the tray. We'll do it one more time with this item right here. Now I only want this one, but because it's overlapping with the other um, decorative ball here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the other just, uh, background removal tool, so not the auto remove. I'm gonna jump over to the manual background removal tool, and I am just gonna uh, trace around this item here and I'm gonna cut it out from the rest of the background image. You don't have to be 100% precise when you're cutting out these products because you can always readjust your points after the fact. Save that, scale it down into place. I'm gonna crop the bottom of this one off as well because I want it to fit within the tray. Save that and scale it. Okay, perfect. There we go. Now, let's see here. We could add some pillows to the sofas. So where, is, there it is, perfect. So again, we've got pillows, but they are shot square on. So again, what you wanna do is you're gonna use that distort tool and you're gonna pull on the individual corners of the uh, pillow and you're just gonna make it kind of rest more naturally on the actual sofa. Okay, perfect. So I'll apply that and I want this to also be on the opposite sofa. So I'm gonna duplicate it, I'll flip it and drag it over. So, you know, like in around 10 minutes, we've been building out this 3D room design that is extremely detailed and gonna help your client visualize how their space is gonna to come together. Um, from here, it's really just a question of continually adding products and tweaking those images until they're perfect for your space. So again, I'm just gonna clean up this image right here to get a lot of the light bulb um, visual back. So I'll go back into the background removal tool and I'm just gonna bring that in. There we go, save it, scale it into place and add it to the overall design. You can add in the TV and just start adding in uh, a few of the decorative elements um, that will make this space feel like it's more lived in and not such a staged empty shell. So again, this is sitting uh, in front of the flowers here. So I'm just gonna push this all the way back to the empty room image. So it's behind that. And then I'm gonna bring it forward a layer so that it sits exactly where I need it to be. Now from here, you can continue to add decorative elements to the shelves and really build out the space. But I think that this video tutorial will give you a very good idea of how you can use that new distort tool to better angle products within your designs so that you can create more realistic 3D looks. In this case, we have angled a number of products within this design. So we did curtains, sofas, pillows, 
rugs, paint colors, artwork, um, and none of those items were shot on the perfect angle. So you don't have to waste your time trying to find that precisely shot uh, product anymore. You can start working with other items, you can tweak them to your needs and build out those design boards that you want to create for your client in a much faster manner. So go ahead, log in, give it a go and let us know what you think. We want to hear your feedback. Your feedback is what's going to help us continue, uh, continue to, uh, build upon these features and make them work even better for you and your design business. So always, always reach out to us, always share your feedback, let us know what you need, and we will continue to make this, uh, build upon this platform so that it is absolutely perfect for your business needs. Thanks for watching.